In this video, you are learning how to make the best foam for foam concrete and other aerated construction materials. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we show you how to create high-quality, stable foam for foam concrete, lightweight concrete, CLC blocks, AAC alternatives, and other aerated building materials. Foam concrete depends on strong, stable, and uniform foam to achieve excellent compressive strength, durability, and lightweight properties. Whether you're a builder, DIY enthusiast, or construction professional, this guide will teach you everything about the best foaming agent for foam concrete, mixing ratios for high-quality foam, how to generate stable foam, equipment needed for foam production. Foam concrete, also known as cellular lightweight concrete, is widely used in construction for lightweight blocks, insulation layers, void filling, roof insulation, and green building projects. The secret to producing the highest quality material is learning how to make the perfect foam. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your questions about foam concrete and aerated construction materials. We reply to every comment in detail. Now, let's go into details. Components of a foam generator. A foam generator consists of a water pump, a foaming agent pump, an air pump, the foam nozzle. Foaming agent, water, and air are injected in the foam nozzle. More simpler foam generators are equipped with only one pump, so that you need to dilute the foaming agent manually in water prior to injection in accordance to the appropriate ratio. More professional models enable you to adjust the foaming agent injection rate electronically or mechanically, but in an automatic way. In the foam nozzle of simple foam generators, you can sometimes find kitchen sponges out of metal that are corroding after a certain time and leading to inconsistent foam generation. USL pour foam nozzles contain specific polypropylene-based three-dimensional meshes to generate fine and stable foam. The filling material of your foam nozzle should be adjusted to the flow velocity of the liquid, namely water and foaming agent and gas, namely air. So if you acquire a foam generator, ask the seller or manufacturer for references, and moreover to test device with your specific construction material that should be aerated. Next to the name machine parts an electric panel and control board are part of the machine to run each of the components. Some machines might be equipped with additional components, for example cleaning systems as in case of USL pour foam generators. The water storage tank is filled. If your foam generator is directly connected to the water line, make sure that the water tap is open so that the water pump can pump water smoothly. Water specifications. The water quality is influencing the foam output in the way that harder water, so with high lime content, results in a lower foam output. So water that is usually softer creates a higher foam generation. Organic load in the water, for example, well water or unfiltered river water, can result in instability of foam. Cold water, less than 12 degrees Celsius or 54 degrees Fahrenheit, leads to a lower stability of foam. We recommend, therefore, to keep the water at a constant temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Our professional foam generators are doing this automatically. If you do not have tab water available at your place, we recommend additionally to filter your water. Don't forget to subscribe. The foaming agent storage tank needs to be filled with foaming agent. Foaming agent specifications. There are various foaming agents available at the market. Surfactants-based foaming agents, also called synthetic foaming agents. Protein-based foaming agents, mostly produced through hydrolysis of animal remains, such as horn, bones, and blood. Sometimes also made from plant-based extraction. The ratio of foaming agent and water depends on the type of foaming agent and water quality. Surfactant-based foaming agents are usually applied at a dilution of 0.5 to 2% and are very effective. Protein-based foaming agents usually require a higher ratio between 1.5 and 4%. They are basically more stable than surfactant-based foaming agents, but the proteins are also prolonging the curing process as proteins are interfering with the hydration of the cement at the early stage of setting. As protein-based foaming agents are mostly containing 30 to 50% active dry substance, this phenomenon can be quite strong. If you need to pre-dilute the foaming agent manually in water watch out, that specifically for protein-based foaming agent, the proteins need around 30 minutes in water before ensuring the best foaming effect. So to achieve stable foam, wait around 30 minutes, always before using the dilution for foam production. 
the pre-diluted mix of water and foaming agent should be used within a working day, as diluted proteins are no more stabilized. USL pore foaming agents are made of molecular engineered synthetic proteins and have very specific foaming effects. The synthetic protein content in the foaming agent is only between 2 and 3 percent, so they combine the positive effects of not interfering with the cement hydration and are granting you also the high stability of common protein-based foaming agents. Some USL pore foaming agents are optimized for foam capacity, others more for foam stability. Some are having a liquefying effect, others are resulting into a more viscous foam concrete. The temperature of the foaming agent also influences the foam capacity of the foam generator. We recommend therefore to keep the foaming agent at a constant temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget to subscribe. Air specifications. The air of foam generators is mostly produced by air compressors. The air pressure is usually set between 4 and 8 bar. USL pore foam generators are equipped with low-pressured air generators working with only 0.3 to 0.7 bar. This is energy saving, reducing the maintenance and resulting into a way more stable foam membrane as the foam membrane is generated in the foam nozzle in a very smooth way. In combination with USL pore foaming agents, the foam stability while producing foam concrete is outstanding. Foam density for foam concrete. Even if drier foam looks more impressive, sometimes it isn't suitable to be used in foam concrete applications. Once low-density foam is added into a cementitious slurry of cement, water, and filler, having a density between 1600 to 1800 gram per liter, the foam can't be embedded in the slurry properly. In practice, foam densities of around 70 to 90 gram per liter for protein-based foaming agents and foam densities of around 40 to 70 gram per liter in case of surfactant-based foaming agents are recommended. For USL pore foaming agents, we recommend 79 to 81 gram per liter. An accurate and constant foam density is essential to produce consistent foam concrete. Undefined manufacturing processes of foam, as often seen, are resulting mostly into low-quality foam concrete in the way that the fresh density is not consistent batch over batch, or varying in case of continuous manufacturing processes. How to test the foam density correctly? In order to test the foam density correctly, you need to have a vessel with a defined volume. The volume can be tested easily by putting the vessel on a scale, pressing tear, and filling the vessel completely with water as shown. The net weight of the filled water corresponds to the volume of the vessel. In our case, the volume of the barrel is 65 liters. Don't use a vessel substantially lower in volume than 50 liters, as two small vessels might result into varying density results, as the foam output of your foam generator may vary if the time period for dosing is too short. Preparation of density check. Before measuring the foam density in your vessel, run the foam generator for around 15 seconds and dump the foam into a separate vessel. After every change of setting, another 15 seconds of foam generation are essential to grant the machine sufficient time adjusting to the new settings. Use the foam for your density check only after this so-called adjustment time of your foam generator. Now, fill your test vessel full of foam. Don't forget to subscribe. Remove the surplus material. Put the vessel on your scale and measure the net weight of the foam. Don't forget to tear the scale with your vessel before. In our case, the weight of the barrel is 2.63 kilograms. Our target foam weight is 5.2 kilograms based on the foam density target of 80 grams per liter and the volume of the barrel of 65 liters. The foam weight for the first test now is 1.79 kilograms, which is way too low. The operator is now increasing the water flow from the setting of 0.6 to 3.4 and redoing the test. Don't forget to clean the barrel with fresh water before and watch out that all rinsing water is fully out. Refill the vessel with foam and check the net weight again.
At the new water setting of 3.4, the result is now 5.67 kilograms, quite close to our target weight of 5.2 kilograms. But the foam is a bit too heavy. The operator is therefore reducing the water valve setting from 3.4 to 3.0 and redoing the test. The foam weight of the 65 liter barrel is now 5.17 kilograms, what corresponds to our target value of 5.2 kilograms, equivalent to 80 gram per liter, so right in between our range of 79 to 81 gram per liter. Relationship between water, foaming agent, and air. In changing the ratio between water, foaming agent, and air, you can adjust the specific weight per volume of the foam, namely the density. Basically, the following applies. Lower water injection is reducing the foam density and reverse. A higher foaming agent injection is reducing the foam density, so resulting in a drier foam. More air is having the same effect, so reducing the foam density. So to reduce the foam density, you can either reduce the water flow, increase the foaming agent injection, or increase the airstream. To increase the foam density, you can either increase the water flow, reduce the foaming agent's injection, or reduce the airflow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your questions about foam concrete and aerated construction materials. We reply to every comment in detail. We are preparing currently another tutorial how to make the best foam concrete. Thank you for watching and your support.